name is Allison Hale. Um, I'm 17, and on November 15th, 2013, I was diagnosed with stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is cancer. <laughs> have you seen my old self? I think I must have lost her. I wonder if I cost her her life. Have you seen my second self? She seems to grow younger. More delicate than ever, but never better. I'm an experiment. Each trial is a test. Constant recalibration. I am recycled cells. I learn to like myself. It all started with a cough. It wasn't until after going to the doctor that I realized I had a lump in my neck. Everything happened really fast. One day, I'm at a concert with my friends, and five days later, I'm getting a biopsy. Alison is a 17-year-old young lady who actually well till a few weeks or before she actually presented to one of the local emergency rooms because she was having sore throat and having difficulty swallowing and then she actually noted a little bit of swelling on the left side of her neck. And she came to the emergency room, they did some films, x-rays, and they found a cluster of lymph glands in her neck as well as in the chest. Each part of the body has lymph glands. Their primary job is to uh, stop any kind of infections. The most common reason when a lymph gland is enlarged is infection, infection, infection. Of course, they can become tumors. In this case, in Allison's case, when I first saw her, it's very obvious it is not going to be an infection because of the location of the nodes and the size and the feel of the nodes when, it, when we feel it. And it's quite evident that she's going to have what is called a Hodgkin's disease. Being diagnosed, being told that you have cancer is surreal. It honestly didn't hit me until my first night in the hospital. I had never even heard of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And all I could think is, how could this happen to me? Telling my friends was... Telling anyone was crazy. But all I could say was that Hodgkin's is one of the most treatable, most curable, cancers out there and that there was no doubt that I was going to beat this. A week after I was diagnosed, I started chemo, which was four rounds every three weeks. And it was three days in the hospital getting intensive chemotherapy pretty much all day into the night and then going home and on the seventh day going back for outpatient. Getting chemotherapy was exhausting and every round was harder than the last. I had five chemotherapy drugs, vincristine, doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, bleomycin, and prednisone. Four of those were given intravenously, and one of them was by pill. So to counteract all the 
side effects of chemo. I have a bunch of medications and for two weeks after my chemo I had to take like 14 pills a day I think. Six in the morning, six at night and then I always add in two Tylenol because my body pretty much ran on Tylenol. 10.30 You taste that though? <laughs> what does it taste like? Like, I mean, I, I don't... She said I've never penny. had a penny oh, in my mouth, penny. but if I had... Yeah, yeah, some people say that they, they taste like a copperish... Yeah. Uh, kind of taste. So your job is just to eat and to pee and do your normal <laughs> thing, and, and my problem is this. Okay? And we'll kick you out in a few days. All right, okay. I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye. Yeah. Six people following her. Cynthia! Get beeping. Wait, I'm having a party back here. Oh. Nurse Rachi! <laughs> I like that. Where did they get that? Nurse Rachi? So how's it been so far? experience, hospital, everything. It's not bad, yeah, you seem to be taking it in your stride, mm -hmm. huh? Let's do it, get it over with. I didn't have any expectations of it was in the Right, right. So right. Everything's kind of just like Yeah. Is that your kind of personality anyway though? Yeah. Are you like that? Kind of go with it person? Yeah. That is so the best way to be, huh? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Did I have the Epstein Barr virus? What? Don't I'm not male. Don't read this. <laughs> Side effects. <laughs> Penis swollen <laughs> nymph. Stop. <laughs> swollen nymph floods. Lymph nodes. Check. Fever. I don't know. Drenching night sweats. Check. Weight loss. Check. Itchy skin, check. Oh look, I guess I have Hodgkin. <laughs> so because part of the chemo's job is to kill rapidly growing cells, which are hair cells, mucus, mouth lining, and um, white blood cells, I had to get a shot in my leg every night for about 14 days after each round of Nupagen, which is a steroid and that would boost my white blood cell count but it also caused very painful bone pain because my bone marrow was producing white blood cells at such a rapid rate. I'd say that the bone pain was one of the worst side effects. Every time you give me a shot you make a face. <laughs> This is one of our chemos running. <laughs> <laughs> this will go over an hour. Should I say anything else? <laughs> What's this one called? Um, this one is uh, cyclophosphamide. I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people associate chemo with nausea, and that's definitely a big part, but it's not the biggest part. I feel like the exhaustion is the most overwhelming in 
the days of my recovery after my three days in the hospital, I just lied in bed. Some days I couldn't even move. I couldn't even answer my texts. Sometimes I could feel like my cells were dying and I knew that my body was working that much harder to reproduce them. But you just felt so exhausted, your entire body just couldn't keep up. Woke up feeling good, and then was feeling good, feeling good, and then threw up. Basically, I'm always nauseous with a headache. I'm really tired. And I pee every 15 minutes. <laughs> All my fingertips are like tingly. They're not numb. I can still feel them, but I'm or, like around my palms. It's like tingly. Lots of sensitivity. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? The Atiman's still running, so that's gonna kick in soon, okay, baby? It's not even finished yet, okay? okay. So once that kicks in as well, you're gonna feel better, yeah? Alright. I know. I don't want to see you puking up either, but. Better yeah. out than in. Eggs. See? <laughs> exactly. She's an optimist. She is. <laughs> I like that. She's very optimistic. Losing my hair was the scariest thing that has ever happened to me in my life. It started falling out about two weeks after my first treatment. It was heartbreaking to know that my hair was going to come out and there was nothing I could do about it. And the rate that it falls out is just scary. I would brush my hair every night to just get it out and because it would be everywhere, all over my pillow, my clothes. So I remember one night I brushed my hair and I had what looked like a dead animal in my hand, but that was how much hair was falling out every night. So the people that provide wigs for people like me with losing their hair to chemo or with alopecia or any type of hair loss problems, I am so thankful for them. <laughs> you do. bright side to, <laughs> to losing your hair is that you get to try all these new things and you get to wake up and say do I want to be blonde or brunette today? I Say hi Allie. I Say thinking of you. Thinking of you. Say be strong Allie. Be strong Allie. Say I love you. I love The support I received was overwhelmingly incredible. Every day I was getting something and it honestly helped me get through the entire process. The student council sent me 90 letters from people at my school showing their support. One of my best friends painted a picture of us with a background of a lymphoma cell. 
they made t-shirts that say all hail Ally Hale and they sold them at my school for all proceeds going to the Valerie Fund. They made a music video to the song Brave by Sarah Bareilles where over 150 students are showing their support for me and they showed that to me right before my third round of chemo I think and I just watched it the entire weekend in the hospital. It's so amazing. People ask me all the time how I can take care of children who have cancer and actually I find it easier to take care of children who have cancer than adults. Kids are a lot more resilient and they have a better outlook on life. Um, a lot of the little kids actually think you're their, their, you're their best friend. They don't even know what's going on with them. They lose their hair, they just put a hat on and they keep going. Um, but also children who have cancer, their bodies have not seen you know, years of abuse um, like a lot of the adults do, so kids who have cancer, they're actually much healthier. They can withstand higher doses of chemotherapy and they do much better. They, um, they don't get as fatigued, they bounce back a lot faster, and they don't let things get them down like a lot of uh, adults might. So after two cycles of chemo, we did a PET scan on you and it showed almost complete resolution, got completely. So that's why you're called, you're considered rapid early responder. So I'm done with chemo. I did my four rounds and I'm currently doing radiation, but my hair's growing back and I'm getting my energy back. I definitely appreciate a lot more of my life now and have so much respect for doctors, nurses, and everyone else who is battling cancer for longer than I did and diseases harder than I had. I feel that I've come out of this a lot stronger and although I had cancer, cancer never had me. One, two, one, two, three, four. Sunshine, I can see busting in. Want you to be mine, and forever I'll give you peace and good times. And together we'll live out on a limb. I'll be the wind. Your future feels a mystery. Well, you gotta. Hold